Hello there and welcome to Football Everyday, your weekly dose of football chat and banter coming to you live and direct from the studios right here at the Manara Star. Hi there, I am Zach and in the studio with me we got the usual Football Everyday crew. My good mates Shabby Singh, Nelson Ng, hello boys. Hi Zach. Of course we are here to run the rule over everything that's been happening in the English EPL to date. So lots of great stuff to talk about and of course this week we shall be re re revealing sorry there revealing all the questions for our very exciting Star Tiger FC Road to Barcelona contest so stick around for that because all the questions we'll be saying it on this show today right to kick off the show we're going to be taking a look at last weekend's football in the EPL because lots of exciting things happened there guys we got to start the show with Arsenal Arsenal, what can we say about these guys? They came unstuck against Stoke, unfancied Stoke 2-1, shabby. Did you expect that result, mate? Um, no, not at all. I've got to put my hands up and confess that, you know, I didn't think that Stoke would have a chance. Right. Um, pretty much uh, one-trick pony, uh, mm. Stoke City, but mm. uh, against um, Arsenal, I thought the, the application was right, you know, came out with an aggressive approach. Mm -hmm. We are strong, we are physical, let's make that count. And uh, yes, they have, uh, as I say, one trick, and that's a long throw from Rory <laughs> Delap. Yeah. But, you know, one trick, two goals, can't complain. Well, Shabs, we've seen this time and time again. I mean, you know, teams that, like, not as good as Arsenal in the footballing sense, but, you know, they've got one tactic against Arsenal, and that's to yeah. muscle them out of the game. And uh, it seems to work time and time again, mate. I mean, you, you know with Arsenal that you cannot try to... Uh, you know, outplay them. You cannot try to out football their football. Right. So you have to take a different approach. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be uh, a defensive approach. It could be, you mm -hmm. know, in uh, uh, Jose Mourinho's words, park the bus. Yeah. I mean, you know, and and if you ha have aggression in your game, and if aggression is part of uh, of mm -hmm. um, your what do you call that uh, is one of your strengths, then you apply it. Yeah. And I thought Stoke City did that extremely well. And uh, once again, I think, you know, great result for them, uh, but too bad for Arsenal. Yeah, well, Nels, mate, I mean, deserve it winners Stoke were. But uh, what can we say about Arsenal? After the game, Arsenal Wenger was very magnanimous, said that Stoke were the better team. And, uh, of course, three days later, he's changed his tune. Mm -hmm. Today, I don't know whether you've read all the football websites, but Arsenal, oh, Arsenal's going on about, like, how uh, Stoke were cowards <laughs> and uh, they tried to kick the lights of Adebayo Walcott out of the game. What do you think about uh, that? Man? Well, what else to say but, you know, typical <laughs> Wenger myopia, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think with Arsenal, it's always a case of, you know, a, a bit of a bit of kind of sore losers to me. Mm. Um, Stoke were a better team, but I think the factor for me for Arsenal is that I think I do agree with Wenger is that his players are, are, are not tired, but, you know, I think they're mm. over-reliant on certain players, you know, people like Fabregas, Adibayor. But you, you know, like against West Ham a couple of weeks ago, without Adibayo, they couldn't score a goal. You know, I, I mean, I, I mean I, I'm very distressed. I'm, I'm sure you can tell because how can you talk about mental tiredness in November, Shep? I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, people I'm, like Brian Clough, they'd be turning in their graves if they heard this kind of stuff. True, right? true, yeah. And uh, I, I, I have to disagree with Arsene Wenger. It, it is only you know the beginning of November. And uh, you know, th which is what technically you only starting your third month yeah, uh, I mean, of, of proper played, football. Only, you know? Exactly, you know. So, so they cannot be an, that cannot be used as an excuse. Mm. I mean, yes, you do travel a lot, you do play a lot of games, but then again, you know, these boys are young. If you have a team that is a little bit older in in terms of average age, mm. then you can say yes, there were tired legs out there. Right. But with young players, there's no reason. Okay, cut back on training then. <laughs> you know, cut back on the intensity in training. Yeah. But don't give me that, you know, 22, 23 year olds are tired. Yeah, what I'm I mean by, you know, that. in terms of echoing Arsene Wenger, in terms of tiredness, I feel that mentally or psychologically, to put it, is that, you know, the team, I think that when everything is going for the whole team, you know, when everything is going their way, the goals are going in, the football is flowing, then they're a very good side, you know I what think, I mean? Yeah. But the minute they don't get a result, they concede a goal. You know, people like when Percy lose their heads, you, right. you get yeah, what I mean, exactly. then, then they fall apart. So, so Arsene Wenger has got internal where, yeah. problems rather than, you know, uh, you know, saying the opponents were, were too rough or too aggressive. Okay. Arsene Wenger needs to deal with the, with the set of players. Yeah, so you, you know, he's got to instill Arsene, that kind of mental... Uh, I think, you know, have become a bit big-headed because they get big victories, you know, they get big uh, uh, results and then you people can see that swagger, then, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. they brought, they, when they brought down to earth, you yeah. know, then Arsene Wenger wants to blame everybody else but his own players. So, look at your players and you know and tell them how they should behave and how they should approach matches okay well boys I, I'm, I'm gonna cut off the Arsenal chat there because we shall be revisiting the Gunners later on the show 
when we take a look at the big game this weekend, which is of course Arsenal versus Man United. Right, we're going to take a little break now, and when we come back, we're going to be looking at the competition for the Star Tiger FC Road to Barcelona contest. So keep it right here on Football Every Day. Hello there and welcome back to Football Every Day, your weekly dose of football chat and banter. Okay, we're going to move away from the football chat now and take a look at the Star Tiger FC Road to Barcelona contest. That is right, we're going to be revealing all the questions that we have given out over the course of the last, what, eight weeks? That's right. Yeah, so uh, without further ado, here's Nelson to clue you up on the contest details Thanks, and Zach. then we'll start the questions. All right, yeah, very quickly, right? Um, you want to take part, today's your last chance, well tomorrow is your last chance to be exact. Tomorrow is the closing date, 5.30pm, we need to get all entries here you know, with us by 5.30pm tomorrow. You can of course mail your entry to us or drop it off in the contest box um, downstairs at the Manara Star Lobby. Why should you join this contest? Very quickly again because um, there are two trips to Barcelona, Spain to catch the El Clasico in December, um, up for grabs and you know, very quickly again to explain um, from the Entries we receive, 26 winners will be chosen to attend the grand finale on November 14th. That's next Friday at the Sold Out Bistro in Sri Hatamas. And from this 26, right, the top 6 entries will face off in a live trivia challenge for the two trips to Barcelona and loads of other great prizes. All right? So that's what you want to do. Hurry up, get on, get all your entry forms, put in all your answers, fill up the slogan, send in your entries to us and you could be one of the 26 winners to be at Sold Out next week. Okay. Um, without further ado, as promised, as we've been promising you for the past eight weeks, right, we're going to repeat all questions to all the eight weeks right now. Okay, so here we go with week one. Okay, who is the current most expensive player in the EPL? Question two, Harry Redknapp won the FA Cup with Portsmouth last season, but who was the last English manager to win it before him? Alright, moving on to week two. Who is the only player to have won EPL titles with two different clubs. Question number two, how many Premier League titles has Ryan Giggs won? Going on to week three, which player won a FIFA Fair Play Award for catching the ball? Where did, sorry, second question, where did Middlesbrough play their home games before the Riverside Stadium? All right, for week four and five, Pass it to my man, Shabby. All right, here you go. Week four, uh, question one. Which team conceded eight goals in a Champions League match? All right, week four, question two. Who was Chelsea's owner before Roman Abramovich? And uh, week five, uh, question one. There are only two managers who have managed four different Premier League teams. You only have to do is name one of them. And uh, week five, question two is which current French international has played for five different Premier League clubs? And over to Zach for week six. Right. Well, week six, uh, question one for week six is who, who did Thierry Henry beat to become Arsenal's all-time top scorer? And the second question for week six goes like this. There are only two English managers in the UEFA Cup at present. Name one of them. Right on to week seven. First question: Name the first British Asian player to play and score in the Premiership. Tasty one that one. And the second question for week seven is: How many Champions League finals has Man United defender Patrice Evra appeared in? And finally, week eight. Question one for week eight goes: Name the only player to captain a club. Uh, sorry. Here we go again. Name the only player to captain a club uh, in the English Championship during three different decades, okay? Three different decades. And for the second question there, in 1996, Kevin Keegan broke the world transfer record for which player in the Premiership? So if you know the answer to all those questions, please do enter this contest. It's a Star Tiger FC Road to Barcelona contest and stand yourself a chance, a once in a lifetime chance to win a trip to the El Clasico to watch Real Madrid versus Barcelona. Okay, well that's our contest and we're just going to return to the football chat now and quickly squeeze in something which I wanted to do, which is to talk about Spurs, mate. <laughs> I tell you, scintillating Spurs, in case you've been living in Mars for the last couple of weeks, Harry Renette's coming to Spurs and he's managed to galvanize the team which everyone thought was dead and buried. 
Shabs. Uh, yeah. What is that, um, seven points out of possible nine? I- indeed, it is. Uh, and uh, back from the dead, so to speak. Unfortunately, still rooted to the bottom of the table simply because, you know, uh, in this situation, Spurs you know, have to rely on other results as well. Right. Uh, but Harry's done well, you know. Uh, he's come in there and he's shaken up everybody, motivated the players. Uh, and I think that's the biggest, um, uh, what do you call that, factor that, mm. that he has brought in. Mm. But at the end of the day, it's still a long, long haul yet. And uh, being where we are right now is just not good enough. So okay. I, don't, I don't think Harry's made, uh, you know, uh, dramatic or drastic changes. And I don't think he will. Mm. But whether uh, do we have the squad that's good enough? It's still an open question. Okay. Well, we're going to return to Spurs chat in the third segment of the show. But for now, we're going to take a little break. When we come back, we're going to be talking about Arsenal versus Man United, the big one. So keep it right here. Hello there and welcome back to Football Every Day. All right, we're going to be talking about Arsenal versus Man U this weekend's big clash. And I tell you what, I'm very excited about this. I'm so excited. I can barely keep my focus. I tell you what, boys, this is possibly the biggest game of the season thus far, right? Because we've got two teams that really love to play football. Shebs, this is a game for the artisans, right? I mean, two teams that like to get it on the deck, play ex- attacking football. Oh, yeah. Uh, two of the most exciting teams in England. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Exciting in terms of uh, the brand of football that they play. Uh, and uh, this is a game that Arsenal will be looking forward to. Uh, mm. You know, they won't have to deal with uh, any long throws or with an uh, overly uh, <laughs> physical approach. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no ugly football <laughs> to contend with. Then. No, not at all. Mm. Uh, and uh, it will not surprise me if Man United played a little bit aggressively. You know? I mean, you know, <laughs> this is a game where, where the likes of Darren Fletcher uh, will come in, the <laughs> likes of Anderson, you know. <laughs> they will be told by Sir Alex Ferguson, you know, get stuck in, yeah. try to upset uh, Arsenal's rhythm. Uh, so I I think, you know, uh, you, you mentioned that, Zach. I mean, it could possibly be the game of the season. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, Nels, you know, we all know that uh, this has been a traumatic week for Arsenal, you know. And, which uh, I'm happy about, of course. Yeah, yeah which <laughs> I know you're very happy about as a Man U fan. Yeah. And uh, confidence is low now. Is this something that, uh, you know, United will want to take advantage of? I know Sheb was alluding mm-hmm. to that, you know, get stuck in. I mean, this is the time to kick them when they're down, you know. Yeah. Um, Definitely, but I think what's crucial is it's going to be tonight's Champions League co- encounters for both teams. Mm. Um, I think that will have a slight bearing on the week, the, um, the weekend's result between the right. two teams because um, we know that um, in this particular round of Champions League matches, if you win, if you get to 10 points, you're normally assured of qualification to the knockout stages. So mm-hmm. um, Arsenal at home, you know, Fenerbahce, I think for Wenger, he's, that's a must-win, three points, you know, there. And for United as well, who I think slightly more difficult tie at Park hit, but I think yeah. Ferguson is going to put out a team to win and you know secure qualification. Mm. So, how he, I think, tinkers with his squad a little bit, yeah. and hopefully don't, they don't get any injuries yeah, tonight. Don't I you think, think Nelson that you know they might look at these fixtures, Champions League fixtures, and say you know we only need one more win, you mm-hmm. know, and and we have got. Uh, games in hand yeah, yeah. Uh, you know we don't have to really have to worry about midweek mm. you can yeah. rest place and concentrate do you think True. the yeah, managers yeah. I mean, might, might yeah, do that? either way you know what I mean I'm just uh-huh. trying to say that mm-hmm. it could go either way depending we don't know what yeah you know, I, how, I do, how, I do how believe that they may save the team for the Champions tonight. League yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. but yeah. of course I think I mean in, in both teams both managers eyes I think the big one is of course this weekend, this okay. weekend. Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, another thing that's uh, uh, working against Arsenal, Sheb, is the fact that they have a few suspensions. We know Van Persie's definitely out. But a few injuries as well. You know, Galas is still touch and go. Adibayal got stretched, uh, he limped off against uh, uh, um, Stoke. Yeah. Uh, Walcott stretched off. So, uh, problems there for uh, Arsenal? Well, I think uh, this is uh, a situation where, where, where they say, you know, you, you need a squad. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I don't think Adibayo is going to be too much of a miss. I I think you know we we tend to praise him a lot when he's missing, mm-hmm. but when he's on the pitch, I don't think he is the finished article or or he's that kind of player. You know that let's say if you took Steven Gerrard out of uh, Liverpool, mm-hmm. it, it would be that dramatic. I don't yeah. think Adibayo has that. Uh, Nicholas Bentner, well, I mean, if you look for a, a big physical di- a replacement directly, he's there. But I would like to see young Carlos Vela. I think he should yeah. come on and mm-hmm. play against Man United. Mm-hmm. I think you know. I think he's ready uh, to, to play against uh, a big team. Uh, I'm hoping Sylvester gives you know, United a hand. <laughs> 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 well, 
Oh no, not There's another an own goal. Yeah. <laughs> and what about the confidence factor, I think Shabby? I mean, you, you think that you could see the team, like, uh, say they ship an early goal. I mean, what's that going to do to the team? Uh, well, I, I think, you know, it, it you know, could, fragile, it could right? play on their minds. Yeah. yeah, it could play on their minds. I think uh, what happens, Zach, you know, with poor performances like this, uh, like against Stoke, is that, you know, players begin to doubt each other. Now, that becomes a big problem. Oh, he didn't do enough or the defence didn't play well enough or the strikers let us down. You, you know, when, when you have these kind of murmurings in the team, that yeah. can be a, a yeah. factor. Uh, so, I hope it doesn't come down to that. I hope Arsene Wenger, you know, can motivate them and say, look, even if we go a goal down in the first minute, mm -hmm. we continue playing but, our but brand I think, of football. But I mean, to be fair, although I'm a United fan, I think, right, if United do score first and... I think Arsenal have every chance of coming back because United of late have shown that vulnerability. You know, once they score first, especially if they do it very early on, you know, one yeah. two goal lead, they well, we, to take we saw that the against battle, you know? last week and, and the, against Everton the week before. Yeah, the, the showboating began. I mean, yeah. which is like a very Arsenal trait, really. <laughs> Go a goal up and then start doing the flicks and whatnot. Yeah. Okay, boys, we got to wrap this up soon, but just before we go, score prediction, boys. Um, I'm going to go with a high scoring. Uh, 3-2 for Man United. 3-2 for United. Nels? 2-1. Two, two one. <laughs> two one, two one Man United. Yeah, and I yeah. just have to say that, you know, I think it's a United's game for this one. But uh, all shall be revealed this weekend. So this has been football every day. It's been a real pleasure. I hope you guys get all those questions that we repeated today. Uh, come in, enter the contest, get yourself to the classical. Until next week, goodbye. <laughs>